Okay, this is a video for my level one percussion students, and this is the uh, first part. Is we're just going to look at it as a reminder. So what I have in my right hand here are drumsticks, and what I have in my left hand are mallets. So students need to start remembering which one is which, and which one do we use to play the snare drum or our practice pad at home? Which one is that? If you guessed the one in my right hand, the drumsticks, you are correct. What are the mallets for? If you guessed that they're for the vibraphone, then you're wrong. If you guessed it for the marimba, you're wrong. <laughs> the xylophone, you're also wrong. Uh, it's for the glockenspiel. So the name of the instrument you have is the glockenspiel. And of course, if you recall, that means to play the bells. So this is what we use to strike notes on the bells. All right, now, first thing I want to, want to do is remind ourselves of our grip and how we hold the sticks. Okay, so I've got my thumbs here, and I'm about the third way up the stick, so I'm not too far back. People regularly do this where they, we're quite far down on the stick. We want to be about the third of the way up. It's this kind of a balancing point, and as you're drumming and getting better at drumming, you'll start to feel where the balancing point is for yourself, and then you'll naturally just know to shift to that spot. Okay? So I've got my thumb. Now I definitely do not bring my fingers out like this, okay? So you need to, you need to be watching this yourself because um, you're the one that changes the habits. So we want to avoid even having that habit in the first place. So you should never do this, okay? So this is a never, never, this one. Our fingers instead, actually this, this first finger really has a separate job to the others and that is that it curls up to make a triangle shape there. And the thumb actually pushes the stick into that triangle. So what's really holding the stick is only the thumb and the finger like this. See, I brought my other fingers out of the way. So the only thing holding the stick is the thumb pushing the stick into that triangular shape of the finger. This finger can wrap around a little bit if you like, but don't, don't wrap around tight. It should be loose, not tense like that, okay? So what do the other fingers do? Well, the other fingers just relaxed. They just hold a cup shape around here, and they catch the stick so that when you're playing, see how it's bouncing up against my fingers here? Try and turn to the light there. Yeah? These fingers actually have a job to catch the stick so it doesn't fly out of the hands. Now, they also have another job too, which is something we'll talk about later, which is the articulation in the fingers so that we can do things like drum rolls, okay? And so they have a job to help control that. All right, let's just go to our basic stroke now. It's the next bit. We don't want to start up here, okay? A lot of students start up here, not all of them, but a lot of them start up here, and this is a really a bad spot because if you think about accuracy and what you're striking, you've got a long way to travel and a long way to get it wrong. So on the snare drum, it's a wide instrument. It doesn't matter so much if you're out by a couple of centimeters. But on the glockenspiel, if you have that technique, you're definitely going to notice because you'll be hitting the wrong note. So um, with percussion uh, in general, we try and have our, our sticks begin at a neutral position, which is roughly about this high. So it's between two and four centimeters off the skin. And I'm ready to play. I'm not playing yet. So remember, we don't actually hit the drums. We don't start here and do that. We're not hitting the drum. What we're doing is we're, we're making a stroke, which is kind of a flowing movement, a bit like you might think of, say, someone cracks a whip. It's got a movement, and then you feel the crack. The analogy I also like to use is it's like cricket. Okay, So what happens is, the, in cricket, is the batsman has got his bat, or he or she has got their bat, holding the bat, and the bowler bowls the ball, and so what the, the batsman does is they step forward a few steps, and they notice how I'm bringing my bat up, in the back, they bring the bat up, and then they make a stroke and a strike at the ball, and the ball gets caught by a fielder. If they don't do the lifting of the bat, they won't have the power to send it for four or six. So actually part of their technique is to raise the bat ready to strike, and if they need to make a, a dummy, like a block, that stops the ball hitting the wickets because they can't hit it properly, let's say, to make a four or a six, then they just stop there and block it. They still make it as though they're going to hit it for four or six, so they're ready for that. And drumming is actually very similar. We're starting here in our neutral position, just like a batsman. And then when we make our, our movement, we actually lift the stick up for the strike. Lifting it up, then we strike the ball, and it gets caught by the catcher. And of course, the catcher holds the ball right above the skin like this. So the whole movement is this. Lift, strike, and you'll let it bounce. It has a natural bounce. Watch the stick bounce here. 
So there's a natural bounce off the, off the skin. We let it bounce and we catch it once it bounces. So it'll be like this quick. Bounce catch. See bounce catch? Yeah. So lift, strike, bounce catch. Try that with one hand to start with. Lift, strike, bounce catch. Lift, strike, bounce catch. Just like cricket. Isn't cricket fabulous? <laughs> now try your other hand, the left hand, or if, it's, if you're a left hand, try the right, try the opposite hand. So lift, strike, bounce, catch. Lift, strike, bounce, catch. That's a movement, so not starting here, starting down there. So when we play and we have to play a note, uh, let's just take this example in music. This is uh, to play four notes. Let's play four notes and we'll go just the right hand to start with, okay? So one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. And that should all be lift, striking, catch, lift, strike, catch, lift, strike, catch. No, none of this. Okay? And none of that. Okay? No, no, there's no, there's no hitting, okay? It's, a, it's an actual sort of a whipping action. All right, let's try our weaker hand. Same thing. One, two, three, four. Great. Let's alternate. We'll change between them. We'll go one, two, three, four. And you pick which side you want to start with first. One, two, three, four. four. Now switch it around. Start with the weaker hand or the other hand you didn't use. One, two, three, four. four. So your stick should be ending up here at the end. If your sticks end up here, or over there, or up here, wrap right your nose, don't do that, that's dangerous. If they end up in a strange place, that's the wrong spot, they need to be just above the snare, okay? Alright, this actually does a nice segue into our paradiddles. So paradiddles, not paradiddentals, because we do things, we don't not do them, do we? Yeah, that's right. So, let's start by learning this A1. Now I've got all the right strokes, it's for the right hand strokes, um, in red. And I've got all the left hand strokes in green. If you're a left hander, and I've got a few of those, you may want to start with the other strokes or just invert it. Um, there's no reason to do that. You just might be more comfortable starting with left. But you just have to remember every time that the right handers switch to their weaker hand, you also have to switch to your weaker hand as well. It's a good idea to actually start with your weaker hand anyway, because then you just follow the instructions and you learn to follow those instructions. And you'll see these inside your um, book that you need. Don't forget to get the book everybody. Uh, it's the Standard of Excellence uh, Percussion and Mallets book. Okay, here we go. So we're going to do A1. It says for me to play right, right, then left, left. Okay, let's do that really slowly. Two, three, four. Right, right, left, left. Okay, let's do that again. Three, four. Right, right, left, left. And don't forget, the stroke has to be drawing up and then bounce and catch. The bounce and catch is actually crucial. All right, great. And we can repeat that quite a few times. I actually like to just hold it and just vamp on it for a few minutes even. Three, four. Right, right, left. Join in. Okay, now let's switch to A2. Uh, in A2, we've got left, left, right, right, so it's the opposite way around. So if you were doing left, left, right, right before as a left-hander, just switch to your weaker side now. We have to develop them both. If you don't develop them, you become this one-sided, heavy-sided gorilla, and then a little tiny monkey on the other side. Okay, <laughs> we don't want that. We want to be nice and strong and balanced. And if you want to do things that are cool, like drum fills, I don't have a whole drum set here, so I can't really demonstrate, but it should be something like If you want to do that sort of stuff, you've actually got to develop the coordination skills for your weaker side too. Okay, let's try this A2. So you're going to go left, left, right, right. Nice and slow. One, two, three, four. Accent on the left. So on the first step, we accent left, right, right, left, right, right, left, left, right, right. 
So it's very important to make sure you've got a slight accent on that first left hand. And it's not a real accent, it's actually just a little bit more energy. Uh, and that's important for the phrasing so that people know that this is the, the actual downbeat of the bar. And it's um, that's what makes the music work. Okay, So make sure you don't get into a pattern of starting with the left, but then feeling like you're doing right, right, left, left. Because if you just take those and move them over there, you get that, don't you? And uh, so we want to make sure that it really does feel like it's on that weaker side that the music starts on. Let's try it again. Left. One, two, three, four. Left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right. Okay? Cool. So. You might have noticed too, when I was doing the accent, I'm actually bringing my stick up higher. Yeah? So there's a little bit more energy comes in when I bring my stick higher. So if I bring the stick really high, it's a lot more energy. That was really loud, ouch. <laughs> okay, now for the A section, what we do is we combine A1 and A2 into a full paradiddle diddle diddle. Okay, let's try that. So it's gonna look like this, we'll just follow that. Or you can read this way if you like, just go that line, that line, that line, that line. It's the same thing as just doing this. And that's why I got the little comma there, okay? So start with the right, then we have an accent on the left, so that's on the third left there that you play. And then we have an accent on the third right. One, two, three. And we'll do it as a loop. One, two, three, four. Right, right, left, right, accent. Accent, left, left, right, 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 left, accent, left, left, right, 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 left, left, accent, left, left, right, right. Hope you're getting that and I hope you're enjoying it. It's really fun. Alright, next step. Let's have a look at B1 and then we'll look at B2 and then we'll put B together. The same system and ideas applies to this. So we're just following the right or the left. So we've got for a, a B1, we've got right, then left, then right, right. Let's try that. Three, four, right, left, right, right. Do it again. Right, right. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Do it again. Three, four, right, left, right, right, right. Left, right, 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 left, right, 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 left, right, right. Okay, hope you don't mind me just pointing out where that start of the bar is. Okay, let's try left, right, left, left. It sounds like marching, doesn't it? Left, 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 right, left. Here we go, so B2. Starting with left. One, two, three, four. Left, right. Accent, left, right, left, left, accent, left, right, left, 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 right, left, left, accent, left, right, left, left. If you feel like you haven't got any of these, you can just pause the video at any point or go backwards and have it and have another go at it, okay? Um, so if I'm not doing it long enough for you, just use the power of the rewind dial on the bottom of the video. Now let's put B1 and B2 together. Same idea of that applies where B1 is first and then B2 is second and denoted by the comma to separate them. Don't forget to accent the left here and a bit more energy of that accent on the right as well. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Right, left, right, accent left. Right, left, left, right. Left, right, left, left, right, left, right, accent, left, right, left, accent on the right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right. Okay, now just do it that same tempo this week, just getting used to it, and we'll speed it up over time. Each week we'll just get a little bit faster. When they do get faster, it sounds really cool, it actually sounds really great. But um, yeah, but it's very important to start slow, otherwise you'll just ingrain mistakes, okay? 
Okay, so this is uh, percussion for week six. This is the second half of the lesson. So let's start with the reminder about the mallets and how we hold them. So it's very similar to the, uh, the drumsticks. And um, so the drumsticks, we were holding them inside the arch there. You can actually hold the mallets with a bit more on the tip there uh, or somewhere in the middle. And the thumb still does the same action of squeezing it into the finger. And these fingers just wrap around to help catch it. Now, one thing where the mallets are different to the drumsticks is that your arm should be more, um, I guess, more sort of outward like this, because often with uh, glockenspiel playing, is our glockenspiel, uh, we need to be able to come around on the sides like this so we can fit two of these on the one. Two effects like that. So we don't hold ourselves like this all the time. We need to be in a neutral position, somewhere between that and that should be the standard position. So then it's easy to flip into this when we need to. Now we're not going to do any of those um, tremolos they're called. We're not going to do any of those um, this uh, week, um, but we will do them by the end of the year for a bit of fun. And um, let's get started, okay? So, just like with the drum set uh, and when you're uh, playing a, a snare drum or the, the pad, uh, the technique should involve some lifting, the actual strike of the note, and then a catch. So we have a, a little bit of cricket in this one too, okay? If you don't get that reference, make sure you go and watch the uh, first video with the snare drum paradiddles. All right, so um, here we have the information at the top. So this is talking about the treble clef where we're reading our notes. That's just a symbol that tells you that you're playing a treble instrument. So not crucial to know. This one here, the 4-4, four -four, the time signature, uh, that member that tells us that we have four beats in the bar and we can see in the music We've got four notes in that bar then a bar line and we've got four rests in the next bar and a bar line So they all add up to four in each of the bars Very cool uh, This tells us about the notation about having uh, Where the, the letters of the notes actually are for these instruments The first three notes we're going to learn number one number two number three Sorry number four exercise numbers uh, these notes are actually below the stave. So this is just another way of measuring it. You can see how this one has a ledger line, it's called, that it's actually sitting on right on top of that ledger line. Not on top as in like this, but on top of bird's eye view, as though you were looking down like a bird does. Uh, and this one here is below that line. Okay, so that, that ledger line just helps us continue measuring down below the stave. We'll take a look at these notes. Now this one here, this D, you'll notice that on your instrument you've got a D up here. This is the actual high pitch D. We don't really want that D, we want to have the lower D because that is represented as being lower in pitch, so it's down the stave. So it's this D and it tells us to play the D four times in time with the music and then we rest for four beats. Then we play it again, rest, play it again, rest, play it again, rest. So it's four times we play the four bars of 4-4. Four, four. Four by four by four by four. <laughs> okay, and also got the right symbol there. So it's telling us to use our right hand. Um, let's do that as it says. I, I personally like switching it over uh, as well. So maybe we'll do it a couple of times. So here we go, find your D note and drop your note on. Little practice. Try your left hand as well. So you should be getting the same pitch as that that I'm getting. Let's do it. One, two, three, four. One, two, Three, four, now rest with your finger. Two, three, third bar. One, two, three, four, rest. Two, three, four. Third, third time. Three, four, rest. Two, three, last time. One, two, three, four, rest. Two, three, four, finish the song. Okay, mm -hmm. see how I counted that out? So I don't stop there. As a musician, with honour and respect to the music, I make sure I count even if I've got a rest. Okay, let's try the C example. And we'll do the left hand. So, C here. So it's C and D are right next to each other. So this is actually alphabetical order. A, B, C, D. Okay, there's our C note. One, two, three, four. C, two, three, four, rest. You can use your right hand, three, if you like. One, two, three, sorry, four, and rest it. 
two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Rest, two, three. Last time. One, two, three, four. Rest, two, three, four. Sorry about not making it perfect there. All right. <laughs> Oops. Um, let's go to number three. We're actually going to combine this note and this note. What was that note again? Check these. If you said it's D, yes, it's D. And therefore, this one is the other one. That's the C on the ledger line. Okay. So um, I don't want to do right hand only, then left hand like that. So that's not really saying that. It doesn't have right and left there. I want to alternate between the two. So we can practice this. Spread your arms, your, your hand position out a little bit more. So this is a bit more like German grip we were talking about in the earlier weeks in terms of where the thumb really is rotated over the stick. That's a bit more like German grip because you're approaching from this side angle to be able to play with two hands. Okay, let's try that. So you, um, you can put the right there or the left there. It's up to you. Both are fine. Here we go. Whole lot of counting. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Rest, two, move to the C. Left, two, three, four. Rest, two, three, back the D. One, two, three, four. Rest, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I hope you're enjoying that. I like doing the rests where you get to touch the note and it stops. It's kind of cute. <laughs> Let's try number four. Now, in number four, this note has a special symbol in the front of it. And the reason it's in the front is so when the musician reads the note, they see that it's actually an altered note. It's not the letter B. It's actually B flat. So we see the flat symbol first that tells me this is an altered note. And B flat is actually on the black keys here. So this is just like a piano where you've got the, the white keys, if you like, for the diatonic C major scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Whereas these ones here are providing the notes in between some of those that are missing. So you can play in other keys. So I'll just give you a quick example. Here's G, and I'll hit this black key F sharp. Oh, sorry. Clumsy. Try it again. Da, 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 da. That was clumsy of me. Anyway, uh, now this B flat note is over here. So find yours. Uh, black group of three. There it is. All right, we'll do this scale later, but I'll just show you. This is the uh, B flat scale, which has B flat and E flat and the octave B flat. I'll just play those two. Can you hear how they sound like they're the same note, but they're actually just one's lower, one's higher? They kind of sound the same. Yeah, so that's called an octave. Um, here is that. Sorry, I just woke up. All right. <laughs> so this is, uh, that's, that's a B-flat scale. We'll actually learn how to play that later. And so will I. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's give it a shot. Number four, B-flat. Uh, it's telling us to go right, left, right. If you're a left-hander, start with left, right, left. Start with your strongest hand, in a sense. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Right, left, right, left, rest, two, three, four. Right, left, right, left. One, two, three, four. Right, left, right, left. Don't forget to rest. Three, four. Right, left, right, left, rest. Two, three, four. Okay, that's great. Now let's do it again, but we'll switch over to the sides. Let's just go from here though. Just do half it. We'll go left, right, left. And if you were left handed doing left first, now switch to your weaker hand. One, two, three, four. Left, right, left, right. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Excellent. Let's try number five now. Mix them up. So this is this portion here is actually where I send students away to practice at home. I'll just play through these songs too, so you can practice along with me. I'm going to go right lefts for me. One, two, three, four. D, two, three, four. Rest, two, down to the C. C, two, three, four. Rest, two, down to Bess. One, two, three, four. Four, rest, two, B 
back to the sea. One, two, three, four, rest, two, three, four, finish. Number six, melting pot. Ooh, this sounds hot. It starts with a C note this time, and it goes down to B flat. Then it comes up to the D note, and it goes down to B flat again. It's a bit of a jumble. You'll have to follow the reading, okay? Pause the video, tell yourself which of these notes is which, and try and practice seeing them. Okay, now let's play. One, two, three, four. C, two, three, four, rest, two, three, four. Bass, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. D, two, three, four, rest, two, three, four. C, two, three, four, two, three, four. Okay, you may have noticed I made a mistake then. I accidentally hit that. Here, let's have a listen to how much sound comes out of this. Don't you do it. I don't need to break your mallet, okay? Not much. <laughs> so it's important to get it in the middle of the key as well. It'll tend to resonate better. If I, I'll, I'll show you. See how it kind of gets more dead if you're closer to, the, to its resting position on the, on the soft mallet area. Um, also, we don't hit on the key on the side here too. That sounds kind of awful. Um, also, um, sometimes with loose keys and different designs of keys, you hit that and it can, it can sort of flop off. So it's, yeah, general, generally we play with a nice resonating sound in the middle, as, as much in the middle as we can. Okay, let's try number seven, band on parade. One, oh, actually pause the video if you like and have a read of those notes again, just to make sure you're reading which knows which first and you're ready to play it. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, rest. Two, three, four. C, two, three, four, rest. Two, three, four. D, two, three, four, rest. Two, three, four. S, two, three, four, rest. Two, three, four, finish. Now you've done all that, do it all with your weaker hand first. Do it faster. One, so mix them up, number five. Starts with D. One, two, three, four. Left, right, left, right. 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 One, two, three, four. Finish. Okay, and do the same sort of idea for these ones as well. So you're not leaving your left hand or your weaker hand, if you're a left hand, you're using the right as the weakest. You're not leaving uh, your weaker side behind as you keep on developing the, the most dominant side. So it's really important to do that and see if you can do it well because there's a sense of pride in being able to use both sides of your body well. Good luck, everybody.